I'm going to show you how to map out your DNA cousins using an Excel spreadsheet and how to use conditional formatting so that you can focus on the hot zones. I have had a lot of comments from viewers who have watched me do it in other episodes, but I didn't really explain how it worked. I'm going to show you how I did this step by step so that you can build your own spreadsheet. Now, keep in mind this is for one specific family of the tree, uh, one specific line of the tree. It is not for all of your DNA cousins. You really need it grouped already. And so if you are not familiar with how to do DNA grouping, uh, there's episodes for that as well. And so we're going to jump into all of that here in just a moment. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further, faster, and factually with your family history research. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe over there and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. Also know there is a handout for this with the step-by-step -step instructions for the Information Access Level channel members. If you want to learn more about that, click the Join button and know that the handouts are in the Community tab on the YouTube channel. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so I have gotten a lot of requests about this. In a previous episode, I was showing how I had mapped out my DNA cousins on an Excel spreadsheet and how I did some conditional formatting so that uh, we could see the hot zone of some of the DNA cousins that were closest matched to me. This was part of a process that I went through to break down a brick wall. And let me give you a little bit of the backstory about the brick wall, and then you can see how how I did it. So coming over to Ancestry here, I had a brick wall right here. So Joel Davis Jr. was a missing parent. And so if you haven't seen my previous episodes, I'll give you the very quick backstory. Rebecca had a bunch of children out of wedlock, and one of which was my great grandfather. And I, none of us, all the universe had not been able to figure out who the father was because Rebecca took it to her grave as to who the father was. So I had this big gaping question mark right here. Okay, through DNA research, I figured out, took me a couple years actually to figure this out, but I figured out that it was Joel Davis Jr. Now I still have a few little conflicts I'm working out, but the DNA evidence shows that I have the closest matches running up through this line to Joel Davis Jr. Even though the man was married and was living in Iowa, Iowa. I believe he must have come back to North Carolina to visit his brothers and at that time conceived my great-grandfather. Okay, so how did I do this? So I created this spreadsheet and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I, I realized that you can't read this very well, but the idea was to map out all of the DNA cousins that descended from this common ancestor up here as a test to see, okay, I knew that it was a Davis. I knew that it was this family of Davis. Davis's through Y DNA research where all of the matches from the Y DNA came back with the surname of Davis. I went, aha. So then I started researching this Davis family because it was closely related geographically to my grandmother, great grandmother, Rebecca. Let me go back and show you that again. All right. So here's Rebecca. She's living in Randolph County, North Carolina. And I knew that it was a Davis family. Well, within just a few doors down from where Rebecca was living on the census record in 1860, Henry my great-grandfather Henry Gus Henley was born in 1862 so in 1861 is when she conceived uh, Henry and so Joel Davis Jr. turns out to be uh, the father from a genetic standpoint all right so how did I do this so we're gonna walk through this process because I've had a lot of questions about how I did this in an Excel spreadsheet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a couple things and then I'm gonna actually create it for you there is a handout that has kind of a map out process plus the step-by-step -step process for the channel members if you're a channel member uh, it'll be in the community tab okay so going back over here I created and I realize you can't see this very well we'll try and zoom in and and take a look in different places so I knew that it was one of four men of Joel Davis senior so if we look at his profile real quick, I knew that it was one of these guys. It was either Makaja, Jesse, Joel, Joshua, or Exum Davis. I studied all of them. I did what we call reasonably exhaustive research on all of them. And uh, Joel Davis, the, the DNA from Joel Davis Jr., the descendants, I traced the descendants of all of these guys 
and through a process of elimination came up with Joel Davis Jr. as being the father. Now, could I be wrong? Sure. There is, you know, maybe a 5% chance that there's more DNA out there that that is stronger evidence, but it hasn't come to light yet. There aren't any more DNA cousins out there right now. So what I did was I mapped out the cousins and I mapped them out in this uh, spreadsheet and then what I did all these boxes here that are blue and pink and red I removed their names so that all I had was a number there so that the algorithm within Excel would work for the conditional formatting okay now I'm jumping over to an example that I have in the worksheet for channel members and what I've done here is I've kind of created a an example okay for those who have not done DNA grouping this strategy you need to have grouped to the family line and for those who are not familiar with DNA grouping watch my episode on DNA grouping and that's basically where you can take that long list of DNA cousin matches and group them into different lines of the family and then once you've done that this comes into play for the one line that you're researching the one line that you have that brick wall as I did so now what we're doing here is we're we're gonna in the very first row here we're going to label the most recent common ancestor and you would type their name in there in this case i was creating the most recent common ancestor really as joel davis senior because i needed to know which of the children which of the men the dna descendants right closely matched to me okay and that's what i did here if we go back over here to the profile we can see that these five men well makaja davis didn't have any children so that leaves jesse joel jr joshua and exum okay back over to the spreadsheet so what i did was here's jesse actually jesse was married twice so i have him in two different cells because i wanted to get the uh descendants listed out for the two different wives edith is a female so she doesn't matter to us right now there's joel we have elizabeth twice and we have and that's probably because we have two different fathers and and Joshua and Exum so these guys let me let me highlight them so these guys are now my primary focus okay so now what we do is we start going through every child that they have and we research every child and the descendants okay so here Jesse has Rebecca who has William William has two children then Harold here has one child actually and Donald has one child who has a 12 centimorgan account in common with me and so on you're getting the idea so over here under Joel Davis second child he has one two three four five six children one of which is my great-grandfather okay and in researching all of these in this case because my great-grandmother would have been kind of like a second wife although they never married everybody that descends from joel davis and nancy stanley would be half relations to me because the mother is different from these children to this child okay so then I did all the research again uh, of the descendants and from the, now you got to remember there may be descendants out there where uh, there's descendants that haven't tested in DNA. So there may be more that pop up over time and I can continue to add to this. But for now, this is what it's looking like. So as I continue to add these people, I can see the Centimorgan counts. I've removed their names for privacy reasons too, but you can see the Centimorgan counts and get a sense of where these Centimorgans are greater. Now, one other thing you need to pay attention to is what if there was pedigree collapse? That means cousins marrying cousins up the line here somewhere that would make the Centimorgan count higher than expected. So you need to do that research as well. I did. I didn't find any not in this line anyway um, so I'm pretty confident that these higher Centimorgan counts are the closest relation to me which all of this collectively points to Joel Davis jr. could I be wrong absolutely but to the best of my knowledge to the best of my ability that's what this is okay so part of what I did was I have gone and created just a simple simple version of it to give you an idea so this common ancestral couple has child number one child number two child number three child number four and yes there are more children five six and seven okay 
So now each one of those child, let's just say child number two for an example. This child number two of the first generation has one, two, three, four. It's actually, I made a mistake there, child number five. So they've got five children there. And then child number two has, has one, two children. Then this first child has one, two, three children, and so on. And then I've removed that child number and put the centimorgan numbers in there because what I did then was I created a conditional format where I came up here and uh, did a conditional format. So I'm going to show you how I did that here in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to this example where we're going to build it from scratch. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So you have your ancestral couple. We're just going to merge and center this cell and we're going to say I'm going to make this up. I would also put their birth dates and stuff in there. Okay. And then all I did here was click on the borders to make that border. Now let's pretend that they have three children and I'm just going to kind of space them apart. So I'm going to say child number one, child number two. Okay, so I've added five children in here. So what I can do is I can actually grab this. If you're not familiar with Excel, you're going to learn a lot about Excel as we go here. I want to move child number five down here. So all I have to do is hover over the edge of a box until I get this four-way arrow. And then I can pick it up and I can drag it down here. Now, if I want to merge and center across this set of fields, all I have to do is come up here and hit merge and center. Okay, so now I've kind of spaced them out and I merged the fields for each one of these children. And what I can do now is I can highlight all of those. I can hit the box tool, drop down and hit all borders. So now that they have a little box around them, you can see them. You can also color the cells. By, I'm right clicking and I'm going to color this yellow. Let's say, oh, let's make this a boy. Let's say this is a blue box. So we'll go blue and we can right click and down arrow and go pink for girls. And you get the idea there. Okay, so in this case, I have two boys and three girls. So now let's pretend that child number one has had uh, three children. And you can do this by ancestral couple too. If you want to say, you know, uh, this is Jack James and his wife, you know, you could label it that way. Okay, so we're going to add child number one, two, three, and four to this one. Now, because uh, we have a number in here, you can actually, in some cases, grab this little right hand handle when you get the little plus symbol. You know you've got the handle, and you can drag it across, and it'll automatically copy and renumber those labels for you. So again, we would type child number one here and drag it across. If child, Let's say child number two has two children. I'm going to grab that handle and drag it across. Well, all right, let's say they only had two children and we don't, we don't need this column. We can highlight the column H, right click, and delete, and it pulls it up. See? So then what we could also do is we could highlight one, two, and three. Let's say child number three over here has three children. We can copy them from here by highlighting those cells, control C to copy, Control V to paste. I'm on a PC, so that's what the command is. I think it's command on uh, a Mac. And I could do the same thing all the way down the line if I wanted to. Okay, now we've got those children. Now we could go and create boxes around them. Well, let's pretend for a moment that child number two here has three children. What do we do? Well, what I do is I highlight three cells and I go right click insert. And now I have three cells. I can merge that across. Actually, I have four cells. I, I, insert, I inserted one too many. So again, I would right click. Whoops, I, I did it again. I right click and delete. And now we can get rid of the unwanted cells. We can merge child number two across this way, merge and center. And now I can say child one, two, and three right here. And I can actually copy them from here. Control C, Control V, and now we've copied them. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm gonna jump over to my example over here. So what I have done here is I created uh, a conditional formatting. So when I was on my cousin matches over on Ancestry, I took the centimorgan count and I I plug them in. Now here's what I do first. What I did, let me go back to my other example. All right, what I did first was I left their names in here so I knew who they were. And then I created a copy of this format. So if their names are still in here, and I can right click on the, 
this is down here at the tab, I can right click, I can rename the tab, I can color the tab using all these different cool little colors, I can make it yellow if I wanted to. Then I can right click and I can make a copy. So you use the move or copy tool. What I usually do is move it to the end, I say create a copy and I copy it over. Now. I don't have to worry about my original document with all the names in it. I can come over here and remove all the names from this one. Let's make this one, I don't know, a different color, red. Okay, so on the yellow tab, we're pretending that all the names are there. On the red tab, we've removed the names and we just put the numbers in. And I'm going to remove all of the conditional formatting by saying clear rules, clear rules from selected cells. And now all that conditional formatting is gone. Now I highlighted this one myself because I wanted myself to stand out, okay? And so anything that does not have a number in it will not be applied to the conditional formatting. So we're gonna highlight all these cells. We're gonna go up to conditional formatting. And in this case, I was using scales. So I can sit here and hover across the different scales to see which ones I like. These are pre-built scales. So in this case, it is the red, white, and blue scale, which kind of gives you a cold to warm feeling which is fine if we click on that and then let go, we can see that. Now what we can also do is create a custom format. So with scales, we can click on more rules and we can create a two scale or a three scale custom color scale. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select three and I want the lowest value to be in the blue tones. So I'm gonna change this color to say blue. You don't wanna make it too dark because if it's too dark, we'll go one darker. But if you go too dark, then it's hard to read, especially if you're printing. And on the highest value where it's closest to us, we're gonna go red, okay? So if it's a really high value, we wanna go, hey, we're, we're showing the target zone. In the middle, I'm gonna pick green. So we're going from blue on the cold end, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you're getting closer, you're getting closer, you're getting hot, you're getting warm, you know? So that's kind of what we have here. Oh, that's ugly. Let's try that again. Conditional formatting, color scale, more rules. We're gonna create a, a three color scale. We're gonna start with blue. We're gonna go to uh, red. We're gonna leave it as yellow in the middle. And now, we can see the different color scales uh, that as we're getting warmer, uh, we're getting warmer toward as it gets closer to me, okay? So the, the higher numbers. Now I had marked some of the font as red as well because I was pointing things out to myself while I was working on this. This guy up here who's red is the guy who tested with the Y DNA that got us the Davis surnames. So that's, we descend from the same great grandfather. But these people here are the closest collectively uh, uh, of all the DNA cousins. And so you can sit there and play with these uh, conditional formatting scales. So we've got the cells highlighted, we go back to conditional formatting, we can go back to scales and we can play with the colors. And that is uh, what you saw originally was the red, white, and blue. The only thing about the red, white, and blue is the white doesn't show. I mean, it doesn't give us, it doesn't pop out at me. So I kind of like the con the uh, custom format. So again here, I've got the example spreadsheet that you could actually use. You could delete cells just, you know, if you wanted to use it, you could delete it again for channel members. And there's also a handout that goes through the step-by-step -step process that I have for this. A couple more tips that I want to uh, remind you about is make sure that you always put your name and maybe an email address at the top of your documents. Title your documents, who created it, when it was last updated. Maybe your hyperlink is to where you saved it in case you have a printed version of it, you forgot where you put it. And really what your mission here is, remember this is a, basically a targeted focused question and we're mapping out the DNA cousins specific to a research question. I would not recommend this strategy for mapping out all of your DNA cousins as the spreadsheet will get huge. One last thing, really important, is make sure you save. Excel does not do autosave uh, automatically. Um, you can turn it on at the top and it will save to a cloud service if you are hooked up with that. But save early, save often. I can't say it enough. Save early, save often. Hey, as a reminder, there is a handout for this. Click the join button to learn more and find the handouts in the community tab on the YouTube channel. All right, there are more videos on the screen for you now. One is about how to group your DNA cousin matches if you've not seen that one. All right, check it out.